Okay, onwards. First thing I did here was to replace or to insert these two capacitors. These are both 47 microfarads at 450 volts or 400 volts. And that is in place to replace the function of that dual cap at the bottom, which, as you can see, just was falling apart. So the cap has been left in there, but it's completely unconnected. It's there just for aesthetic re reasons on the underside. And these two caps are pretty sturdy. I don't even think I need to put any um, hot glue or anything on it because they're connected to the ground there, the common ground. And then I created these little ringlets where the respective uh, wires fit in and then are soldered. So that is done. That cathode bypass capacitor for the ECL86, 83, whatever, for the output tube. The uh, resistor was 150 ohms. It was actually reading 150 ohms, but it was pretty, pretty charred. Um, so it looks like it had been stressed somewhat. Here's that resistor. Looks like it's been through the wars. And then this is the capacitor. And you, as you can see, it's been spilling its guts. So that got replaced. And then the other one, the other one is that one over there. That's this guy. This is a four microfarads. The positive is connected to ground. This is in the discriminator circuit of the FM. Um, again, another one that's been spilling its guts. Don't know what the value is, but I'm sure it's leaking like crazy. Now, as far as electrolytics on this side, I don't think there's anything inside the FM box, but as far as I can see, that's about it for electrolytics, and um, which is good news because I don't think we need to change these other capacitors. Just for testing, I un uh, unsoldered this one from there, so I can get one of these mustard caps. There's quite a few of them in there. These are mostly in the signal path where high voltage is concerned. And I want to test this guy. I want to see what the um, leakage is, if anything, on there. And if, um, if it's fine, that means I don't have to replace any of the others. So what I've done is I've prepared the capacitance leakage tester. And I'll show you and see what we get out of that. Now this capacitance leakage tester is the one I designed and built and uh, I've got a series on it. I'll link to the first video above. Um, and I'm going to place this. This is completely floating. In other words, the voltage that this is going to apply, it's going to apply up to 340 volts or so. That capacitor is a 400 volt capacitor. So the voltage I apply here, this ground, is completely floating. In other words, I can simply put that on there and on the one side of the capacitor, put this on the other side of the capacitor, make sure it's not touching anywhere else, and it isn't. And now we can switch it on. It starts off with about 50 volts, and it's off at the moment, so I'm going to put it on there. And now I'm going to up the voltage. On this side, you'll see the increase in voltage. We watch the current. It's on a 100, millivolt, 100 milliamp scale, full scale, we shouldn't see much, if anything. 150 volts, 200 volts, 250, 300, maximum 350 or so, 345 I think it is. We read zero there, but let's get this to a more sensitive scale. So let's put it on the 10 milliamp scale, we still get nothing. 1 milliamp scale, nothing. 100 microamp scale absolutely nothing. So that capacitor is absolutely spot on. No leakage. Let's put that off. When you put that off, it shorts it with a 47k resistor, so it discharges. I can now drop the voltage and we're safe to go. So that capacitor is perfectly, perfectly fine. It is not leaking at all. Now the other test I could do is just to read its capacitance and see what we get. 22, 21.3 nanofarad. That is a 22 nanofarad capacitor. So it's reading spot on. So these capacitors 
as expected, I'm sure you can get exceptions, but as expected, have held very, very well, especially in the leakage department. What this means is that we're ready to power it up again and measure some voltages, see what we've got on here. I've got to rewire that thing back to there. So um, I think we're ready to do some voltage checks on here. So I'll prepare that and then we can go through this together. So I have a temporary speaker connected on here. Never switch this on without a speaker, you'll blow the output transformer. I have the dim bulb with only one light on. And I have one light is on, so maximum restriction, so I'll put that on. We're reading 234 volts line voltage, mains voltage at the moment. Now there are no valves in there, all the tubes are out, so we're just going to give it a basically a dry run. Here we go. The little lamps are on, except one. The last one here is off, so one of them is burnt out. And let's see what we've got coming in here. 285. 285 sounds about right. It says 245, but obviously that's with a load. So 285. Let's put this on AC and see what kind of ripple we've got. Very little ripple, but then very little load, so that's good so far. Let's see what the second point is. That's the second B plus. 285 is no current being drawn by the tube, so obviously it's about the same, but the B plus is getting there. If we look at pin 6 of this guy, let's see what we've got. 285, all right, so that's getting B plus. Um, we could look at the other two, pin 7 of that guy. It should be, I believe it's that one there. There we go, 285, so we've got B plus on there. And if we go a bit further back, we should get the other tube, which is pin 6. There we go. There's B plus, 284. Right, these are all reading 285, which means that because there's no current being drawn, the B plus is being read where it should be read. Okay, let's see what we've got for our heater voltages. And the best place to read that is just on any one of these. One, two, three, four. It'll be that green one. It'll be that guy over there. 6.45 okay that should be 6.3 but we've got restriction on the uh, light bulb and we've got no tubes so it seems to be in the ballpark so i'm going to put the tubes in and we'll try it again see what we get right the tubes are in and uh, what i did before putting them in is i cleaned all the pins and put a bit of a contact cleaner um, on the pins and you know, stuck them in and out a few times just to see what, uh, make sure we clean whatever we can. Now the tubes are in and we're going to prepare this by um, monitoring the B+. This is the first B+, coming out. And we'll see what we get. You see that's still charged. And I was messing around in here. Mind you, I was always, I'm always careful, but that is still the voltage on there, believe it or not. Now, if I switch it on. The dim bulb came on just slightly. The two little lights on front on the front here are on, the two that are working. I can see some heater heaters on in the tubes. The voltage is coming down as the tubes start to conduct and we should hear something. And we are. And guess what we're not hearing? We're not hearing the hum. We're hearing some because this is uh, open, but we're not hearing that hum that the filter caps were giving us. 
Oh, that's brilliant. All right. Now I'm going to reduce the restriction. I'm going to increase another light bulb on here. So we're reducing the limiting uh, effect of the dim bulb tester. There we go. Now we've got some noise. Noisy pot as well. I'll reduce it even further by adding the other light bulb, the third light bulb, and the fourth. Now, this is practically, there we go, practically no restriction. We've got um, equivalent of 200 watts light bulb in there. The line voltage coming to this is measuring at 230, it's drawing 100 milliamps. And we've got the noise without the hum. Perfectly silent. The pot is noisy, obviously, but other than that, I think it's a go. Let's try the other B plus, the second B plus, 202. And what we're we supposed to have there, should be able to see it on the schematic. The first one was 245, the second one doesn't say. It does, it does, it says 213. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. 213. Now that is with, um, it changes slightly depending on whether you're on FM or AM. Let me try to change one of these. This is a real bitch to move. Don't even think I can, but anyway. I'm not getting any tuning, which is fine, but um, at least I've got the voltages right. And the hum is gone. So the next thing I'll do is clean the pots and clean the, um, I've got to clean the switch. Okay, I've done a bit more checking on some component values. There were a few solder connections that were iffy here. So I freshened those up and um, let's put this on now. I've got uh, an antenna out there. It's the mini whip that I used. I've got that connected to the back. I've got it, I believe it's set to medium wave, judging the last position is phono, I think that's medium wave. So let's see what happens. Oh, that's tone. That's power and volume. As you can see those two lights are on, that one is dead. I'll have to change that out. get some noise. Ha! Listen to that. Brilliant. Can't understand a thing, but it sounds brilliant anyway. Canary Islands. Okay, this is where we are. Um, after a failed attempt to try and to capture the test, I'll do it again because uh, as somebody on one of the viewers, one of the comments was that I lose more video than anybody else he's known. And it's true, these bloody camera batteries go dead halfway and I never focus on what I'm doing. I'm too busy in there and I forget about the video. So here we go again. I'm going to switch it on. I've got FM antenna and I've got the AM antenna on there. 
The FM antenna is a normal dipole um, stuck on top of the wall there. The uh, AM one is a mini whip that's stuck outside, which uh, I've been using lately and it works very well. Oh, here we go. All right. This, I believe, would be uh, phono, so that would be medium wave. <laughs> okay, that's medium wave. Let's try long wave from the end. <laughs> Some French station. Another French station. He kept an office at home in a nice part of town, not too flat. This is, I believe, I think it's BBC Four that transmits on uh, long wave, and I catch it in Madeira. To take a walk one day when the autumn weather was fine. Or perhaps to visit a church. He did so love church stonework, and there were so many of them. But it was drab to visit a church alone. All right, short wave. Okay, now the all-important FM. This may well need a bit of alignment. I'm going to go to the 
trying the antenna all sorts of directions, but it's not the best. Let's try the AM antenna. No, um, FM is a little disappointing. So I'm probably going to check out the tube and then check the alignment. But anyway, um, what I was doing while the, um, while the battery was being charged to redo this part of the video is I cleaned up this whole section, you know, the, the knobs in some warm water and um, you put it in warm water with, with some uh, dish soap, leave it there for a while and then you clean it up properly. Everything comes off. Same with these guys, really, really new. And uh, generally, because of the condition this is in, this thing cleaned up very, very well. And so this thing is ready now for an alignment. So I think what I'm going to do is um, I'll take some time to study the data sheets. I want to check this tube again, maybe replace it with another one, because as I said, the FM is pretty disappointing. The uh, AM bands are very, very clear. Um, that mini whip is what I have to thank for this because it really does produce some pretty amazing results for the size of it. And if anybody's worked on or knows what a mini whip is, it's so small that it, it shouldn't work. But, um, and if you haven't tried it, you should because I didn't believe it and it took me ages before I finally got to doing it. And I'm based here in Madeira in the middle of the Atlantic. So uh, I wasn't expecting much. I used to use a long wire, about 30 meters or so. And I was quite happy with the result, actually, surprisingly. And then when I tried this mini whip, it's, it was amazing. Um, everything just came to life. With long wave, I used to get absolutely nothing. Now I'm picking up some BBC station from the UK, which has surprised the hell out of me. Um, so yeah, you should probably try it if you play with these radios. Now, uh, the next stage is to do a little bit of cosmetic repair also on the, on the body. There's not much to do, just cleaning. And then putting this back together, giving it an alignment probably, because I don't know what the state of the, um, of the alignment is on this thing. This thing, the switches are fine. The switch is fine. The uh, volume and tone controls have been uh, cleaned out with contact cleaner and so they're not scratchy anymore. So everything seems to be a-okay here, except for the FM, which I expect is probably alignment and maybe this, this tube. Um, I've got that tube in stock here anyway, so it should be easy enough to just put in another one that I know works very well and see if it makes any difference. Alternatively, it could well be the antenna that um, at this time of day, which is night, might be a problem. But this is going very, very well, and it's been a pleasure working on this because it's actually very, very simple because most of the capacitors that you'd normally change on a normal tube radio, which are those paper and oil and things like that, are not here. These have used uh, ceramics. Those ceramics last longer than shear and, and cockroaches, so we've had no worries with that. Um, obviously a couple of little quirks like that burnt out, well not burnt out, but that charred um, cathode resistor of the power tube. There's certainly been quite a bit of power going through there and you can see the result on the, uh, on the transformer. There's a bit of a burn mark on there, so quite a bit of power went through there. I've uh, dropped the mains voltage to, well I've set it to 240, so obviously this is working at a slightly lower voltage than it was before but it makes it safer for the tube, certainly increases their life. And um, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna finish for now. And when I come back to you, it'll be for the alignment and then the final fitting um, and final testing. All right, bye for now, thanks for watching. And if you like this stuff, please subscribe, it's always welcome.